Hello there and welcome to this video. I'd like to introduce you to one of the new features in NetAdvantage for Civilite version 10.3, namely the Zamgrid group columns. Group columns allow you to group multiple columns together under a single common header. This allows your end user to quickly to see quickly which columns fall under similar categories. Basically, this feature simply arranges the child columns in a horizontal fashion while specifying an additional header for the grouping, as in this case. As you can see in this example, column, uh, column grouping can also be nested. In this case, we have two column groups, each containing child level columns. So how do column groupings work with all the usual features you've seen in, in the XAM grid? So let's try with one of the most often used features, column moving. Basically, the way this works in column grouping is that you can only move columns at the same level. For example, I can move these two. I can move these three because they are at the same level, but I cannot move this column in front of this column, for example. I can move the top level and at the child level as long as these are at the same level in the grouping hierarchy. Let's take a look at column resizing. So if I resize this group column, the default behavior is that only the rightmost column increases its width to accommodate the increased size of its parent columns. The other two columns width remains unchanged. However, if we specify a star for the width property of a column, as I've done here for one of the columns. When I resize, as you can see, the product name column gets the increase in width rather than the product ID column, which is rightmost in this case. Later, when we look at the code, we're going to modify the width property of a column and we'll see how it impacts the resize behavior at runtime. Let's now look at column chooser. So let's say I hide these two columns and I then open the column chooser by clicking on a narrow band here. I can make the columns visible again by clicking on their menu items in the pop-up or I can open the column chooser itself. What we see here is the column chooser only shows you the columns at the level where you opened the column chooser. It will not show all of the columns, but rather just the columns at the level where you open it. So for example, if I am to hide the quantity per unit column, I'll be able to open the column chooser and only see the two columns at this level. So how do column operations work when you have a scenario where you have group columns? Sorting, filtering, group by, and conditional formatting are only supported at the child level columns. So you cannot sort or filter by a group level column. Let's take a look at column fixing. Column fixing is only available at the top level columns. So columns further down in the hierarchy cannot be fixed. Only the two, only the two topmost columns in this case can be fixed. Let's now take a look at the code which is used to, to generate this example. Looking at the code in the main page which we were looking at in the sample, you can see how this, uh, this sample was built. First, I add a reference to the uh, Infragistics Controls grids namespace in the XAM grid library, and then I can reference the XAM grid building the example as shown below. So the most important thing here is to look at the columns collection. 
In the columns collection, at the topmost level, we have two group columns responding to the two topmost group columns we saw in the sample. Their key, the value of their key, is also used for the header value of the column. So basically, this is a tree structure where underneath each group column in its columns enumeration, in its columns collection, you specify the columns which you'd like to have at that level. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you can nest these as deep as you, as you need. So an example is the second group column where we have a text column and a second level of group column which contains three text columns. Moving further down in the code, uh, you see how we've enabled all the behaviors we saw in the grid. Fixed columns, column chooser, column moving, and column resizing. Let's take a look at the code behind. Over here, I'm just binding some sample data to the grid. Of course, you wouldn't be dealing with sample data, you'd be dealing with your own real data, so you wouldn't use the same code I'd use to generate this data. Okay, so let's now modify one of the properties, one of the width properties of one of the columns and see how that impacts resizing behavior at runtime. All right, I've added a width equals to star to the unit price column in, in the grid. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run the sample and we'll see how that impacts its behavior at runtime. So now what we should be saying is when I resize this column, only the unit price column increases in value because it has its width property set to a value of star. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.